So now we have the last presentation in the session by Bart Nissen, um, and he will present a decision tree for management of Black Cherry. So please go ahead. Okay, I will try to share it to you. Um, one moment. Perfect, it starts to appear on our screens as well and we see the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you for inviting me. I am not working in the Alpine area and uh, you will see in the maps that we have a completely different uh, black cherry situ uh, situation than you have in the Alpine area. But again, uh, as uh, Uwe said, uh, it can, it can be an example of how to look at an, at an enemy, at an invasive uh, tree species. Um, Uwe and I have not been working together uh, very much, but uh, in the preparation of these presentations, we um, found out that we have a quite similar look towards uh, how to uh, approach uh, invasive uh, tree species. And that's why we made this uh, presentation together. As you see in the, on the screen, uh, there is the sign of the Life Resilience. It's uh, our uh, life project, uh, which just started and which will go on for seven years, in which we will um, look at uh, another way of looking at uh, invasive uh, species. Um, we are not focusing in this project on the invasive species, but we are fo focusing on the functioning of the forest ecosystem and the other ecosystems. And uh, we think in a lot of cases, it's possible to prevent dominance of invasive uh, alien species by strengthening the resilience of the forest and nature. And if you can, it, as you can see on the, on the pictures, we are not only talking about trees, we are also talking about uh, plants, uh, other plants and even on uh, animals. This project is, of course, uh, uh, subsidized by, by the European Union, and we found a lot of sponsors in the Netherlands to sponsor this project. So, Black Cherry. Um, if you look at, at uh, this uh, nice map, uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, site for everybody who is concerned about uh, in, uh, uh, exotic species. You see the original, to the left, the original spread of, uh, of black cherry in uh, Northern America from the uh, south of Canada to, uh, to in uh, Mexico. And you see the actual spread in, uh, in Western Europe or in Europe. And typical in, in this picture is that you can see that uh, there is nowhere any, nowhere in the world an as dense uh, populations of black cherry as there is in, let's say, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, the north of Germany, Denmark, even not in its uh, uh, country of origin. This has to do with, with the history. In its country of origin, it's mostly uh, in, in mixed forests that, uh, that you find black cherry. In, in, the, in our countries, uh, black cherry was introduced when the forests were first established on wasteland. So the forests were established mainly by planting pine and black cherry was mixed with the planting of the pine for uh, uh, enhancing soil uh, formation. And as black cherry is very competitive towards uh, uh, scotch pine, you get uh, this uh, situation. And uh, again, I like to show uh, you this picture of uh, that uh, Uwe already uh, uh, showed you. Um, uh, in, in the beginning, of course, in the 60s, we thought uh, we made a, we made a mistake. We introduced this uh, tree species, and we're going to get rid of it. And this has been in the Netherlands a very huge uh, uh, governmental programs in uh, paying uh, in, in, in in subsidizing everybody who was fighting it. It was very coordinating even, and you can see the result after 200 million euros spent. So this brought us to the, to the conclusion that we 
won't get rid of this three species anymore. So then we started studying what to do with this three species. Again, you, if you look at, 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 a, at, a, at a smaller, uh, at a larger scale, in, in the, you see this, this dominance of, uh, of black cherry in, uh, in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, uh, it goes on in Poland and in, uh, and in uh, Denmark. And uh, what you can see here is what we talked uh, about, uh, bef uh, about before, that the, um, um, the attention for black cherry makes that it gets registered as being there. You see a very clear border separation, for example, between the Germany and, and the Czech Republic or between Belgium and, and France. This is not that these three species is much more at one side of the border than the other side. It's just not registered at the other side. So I presume that also in the Alpine region, there is a lot more uh, black cherry present uh, than, than this map uh, uh, shows. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, project, uh, Resilias, we are studying on black cherry, but we didn't start with this project. We started uh, in uh, more or less in 2008 when we accepted the idea that we can't get rid of this tree anymore. We pu published this uh, book that you can find on uh, ResearchGate. It's in Dutch. There's a good reason to learn Dutch, and um, you can you can freely find it there. And in uh, this project, we will try to, uh, to uh, develop the same uh, way of thinking about in invasive tree species also for uh, red oak, uh, robinia and uh, tree of heaven, which we think uh, we will not be able to, uh, to stop from, uh, from uh, migrating. Okay, uh, before I go uh, into the decision tree, uh, I will finish with, with uh, the decision tree for forest managers. I will first um, talk shortly about uh, our findings about ecosystem services. You can find this more uh, broadly explained in, in the book, but uh, it's, it's very important because uh, if we had to accept this three species, of course, we have to think about what the impact of these three species are. And if there are, besides the negative impacts, also perhaps positive impacts and how we can use them in uh, realization of uh, ecosystem services. So first, of course, we look at biodiversity. And what we do see, uh, and that's very important uh, uh, in the Netherlands and Northern Germany and in Belgium, that is that uh, black cherry has a very positive impact on the soil uh, formation. Um, why is it that important? Because uh, the Scotch pine forests that were planted all over this part of Europe they were planted on very poor sandy soils. So every amelioration of nutrient, nutrients in these soils uh, are very welcome. We see an, an, a change from more to more to, or, or to mull, and we see an, uh, uh, a little increase in the, in, the, in, in the pH, but we see mostly an increase of uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent in nutrient availability. At the same time, also we see that uh, there is a change, uh, as as Uwe, Uwe already said, in the in the herb layer. But mainly, what we see in herb layer that is a shift from more light demanding uh, species to more typical true forest species, like the anemone or salmon seal. And the, there are some contradicting results in this. A lot of people don't find these shifts. And that is, it's, it's very easy to understand because in most of these forests, there were not forests before, there were heatlands before. And uh, uh, people, uh, people, plants that migrate very differently like anemone or a salmon seal, they are not present in these forests. So they can't develop in this situation. But if they are present, like you see, for example, in the researches in Poland, you see uh, this shift to, to, us, to forest species. And uh, as uh, uh, Uwe already explained, um, there is this uh, 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 um, evolutionary acceptation of, of black cherry by, by the insects. Uh, and also uh, by, of course, uh, by all the other um, three species, uh, uh, species in the forest. What you see here is uh, black cherry spread by fox. This is a fox vomit. 
Uh, this is uh, one of the typical ways of spreading black cherry. Uh, the, the foxes they migrate for uh, for kilometers in one uh, in one night, and uh, they uh, spread uh, the the plant. It's not only the birds who do it. Uh, if, when we look at forest, we are, we are rehabilitation, a very um, important uh, subject for our uh, Scotch pine forests. You see that there is an impact on the rejuvenation of the native uh, tree species. But the most of the impact is on the light demanding native tree species, and then mostly on Scotch pine and oak. Why on Scotch pine and oak? That is because Scotch pine and oak, they grow very slowly in the beginning. And then they are out uh, um, competed by black cherry. Also, lime grows very slowly in the beginning, but lime has a, such a, a high uh, a shadow tolerance that it can just grow underneath the young uh, black cherry plants. So, what you see is that the presence of black cherry stimulates the forest succession. It stimulates the, the development of forests from pioneer species, light demanding as pioneer, pioneer species towards more shade tolerant, uh, late successional uh, species. But of, again, this is, can be very uh, problematic in forests where these C trees of these uh, late succession species are not present. And in most of our forests, they are not present. So we have to plant them to um, strengthen the resilience of these forests to, uh, against uh, black cherry. And then, of course, there is this uh, huge problem of uh, grazing pressure, because most of uh, the roe deer, the red deer, they, all, they, they don't like uh, black cherry. They prefer the native tree species. So if there is a high uh, grazing pressure, it's very difficult to uh, uh, bring in the, the, the competition of native tree species in the forest. Uh, Forest climate is, is something very important also. It's becoming more important with, with climate change to, to, to get a, a cooler and, 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 and uh, forest with a higher humidity. And then black cherry can uh, play a very important role because if there is a gap, it's, it, it, it uh, very quickly fills this gap and it uh, restores the forest uh, climate. So the way we are looking uh, at black cherry at this moment in forest rehabilitation, that is, we see it as a pioneer in forest succession. But as, as we all know, as a forest ecologist, a pioneer will always lose and the lake su succession species will take uh, over. Uh, let, as you see here, uh, that is the, the, the maple growing under full grown uh, black cherry trees. Climate adaptation, another important uh, uh, <laughs> question. What, what will be the role of black cherry in climate uh, adaptation? What we can see is that its distribution is eccentric to its climatic distribution in uh, Northern America. Um, it should be more spread, if, if you compare the climates, black cherry should be more spread over, over Europe than it is. And this is because black cherry is still mostly in these countries where it was in, intensively planted. So this, this climate uh, uh, maps that give the idea that, that uh, black cherry is quite uh, drought and, and heat resistant and that we won't get, we won't lose them in the climate change. There is some study going on, uh, for example, in Poland which uh, point in your direction. I'm very interesting to, uh, to see the studies when they are, are, are ready. But when you look at the, the comparison with, the, with North America, you could expect uh, black cherry to be very uh, climate uh, resilient and that it also will go on playing its role in forest uh, re rehabilitation. And then there is this question of uh, timber production. Of course, uh, timber production is, uh, can be very important if you have to accept the tree species because most of our forests are multifunctional forests in which you also, also uh, produce uh, uh, wood. And uh, when we started uh, thinking about accepting black cherry, uh, some foresters, they started looking if they found uh, uh, good formed uh, vital black cherry trees on sandy soils. I'm only talking about sandy soils in this presentation. 
This is one of these uh, foresters uh, who was very glad to find his nice uh, tree. And uh, we, we, we have been studying things and we found out that uh, the only way of producing value wood with uh, black cherry, uh, that is that you need an, an, a small open space, small gap with, uh, with, with, with light from the top and you have to make your selection very early. To the left, this selection is made in, uh, in Saarland, in Germany but they select a little bit, little bit late. Uh, we already now select our future trees and uh, at the age of, uh, let's say 10, 12 years. And then we, we underplant them with native uh, tree species. So that at the same time, when the black cherry variable wood is growing underneath the native tree species are taking over the, the space and will in the future form the forest ecosystem. Okay, with this background, uh, we, we saw that, that there is a good reason to, uh, uh, to work on the integration of black cherry in the, in the forest ecosystem. Uh, we, can, we, we, we are convinced we can manage it. Uh, we can use it uh, for ecosystem uh, services. And now the question is how to help uh, forest managers to take their decisions, what to do. And we try to make a quite simple decision tree with uh, four different types of vegetation, four different management options, and central to this um, decision tree are the choices made by the foresters uh, themselves. So we made an, an uh, we we uh, make uh, I don't find the word in English. <laughs> we made a distinction between an open landscape, a light forest, a layered light forest, so a forest in which there is more shadow because of the layering of the forest, and a dark forest, a combination of uh, shade casting trees and, uh, and, uh, and the layering of the forest. These are the four types we distinguish. Uh, we distinguished four uh, management options. Uh, one is the typical combating options in which we used a lot of different uh, uh, pesticides. The most the most uh, aggressive that we used in the, was uh, ancient orange in the in the past. Okay, there is this combating. Then we we developed the idea of phasing out a black cherry. This is something that very, works very good if you understand the dynamics of the different tree species and. Uh, how they uh, behave under different soil and uh, light conditions. For example, in, in this picture, you can see the, the yellow leaves is, is the black cherry. Underneath the, the yellow, uh, the black cherry, you see the small trees of, uh, of the scotch pine. As I said, they grow a lot slower, but you also see that the, the larch and the birch, they grow faster than black cherry. So you can use this competition in phasing out uh, black cherry by selection, for example, in this situation, the, the large and the, and the birch trees as uh, future uh, trees. Bart, sorry to interrupt you, but please, uh, you have to come to an end. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm nearly sorry. there. I'm nearly there. <laughs> Perfect, thank yeah. you. Uh, once that, uh, that, that you have strengthened this uh, resilience of the forest by uh, uh, the introducing competing uh, tree species. You can think about integrating black cherry. That means uh, that you just uh, see it, the tree, as a normal tree in the forest, and you manage it as a normal tree in the, in the forest. That's what we call integrate. And then the last uh, uh, and, and the most important uh, um, management option is to strengthen the resilience of the forest by planting all this uh, competing uh, native tree species. What you see here is a complete uh, black cherry forest. The forest cover is only black cherry and underneath you only see native tree species. And this is because the, tree, the, tree species, the seed trees of this native tree species were present at the forest border. That brings us uh, to uh, two action uh, perspectives. I will uh, skip that a little bit. That is you can move forward in the, in, the, in the succession, or you can go backward in the regression of the forest development. And then 
there are the, the, the choices uh, uh, forces ask themselves and they are integrated in the final slide, the, the uh, decision tree in which you uh, forest just can follow his questions he has in the forest and he finds out if it's better to combat or to integrate or to uh, phase out black cherry or to enhance uh, the resilience of uh, the forests. It's very practical, it's open use and it's uh, very easy to explain. Okay, to end, uh, I will show you the largest uh, uh, black cherry I found in Europe, um, near Aachen in Germany. It is uh, more than a century old. Uh, it is 35 meters high, 81 centimeters thick. And uh, this shows the, 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 the potential of this tree in our forest. Okay, thank you for your attention.